Don't seem to turn that fully right. You need to give the film path a good clean. Then into it and sprocket. Let's gather dirt. Needs cleaning off. And uh, some of these rollers are pretty grimy as well. So a general clean of the film path. The gate's not too bad, but it does need clean. Now for joining this sprung take-up belt, potentially quite difficult because it's um, quite hard to make this sprung steel into hooks to hook each other and if you do it's not a very good join in the sense that it's not very flexible and this take-up belt has to go around a very small pulley at the motor end slipping so I'm thinking some heat shrink over both ends short piece of heat shrink shrinking that and see whether that is strong enough to hold the two parts together under tension, under the required tension. So uh, I don't know whether that will work, it won't take long to find out. I've added steel washers to those two bearing plates for reinforcement. They now need to be put back. And joining the take up belt with heat shrink didn't work. So I've tried to make a hook arrangement. Doesn't look terribly promising, but perhaps it will hold. We'll find out. I've just received the colour filters that I'm intending to use. It's uh, what's described on the advertisement as primary red and primary green. And they look about right. These, uh, these particular filters are sold for people to colour the light in their fish tanks. If you buy photographic ones, I think it's probably the same stuff for the lighting, photographic lighting, but it comes in packs that are much larger than I need to use. So this is the intended experimental filter for the colour wheel. In the original Kermai colour projectors, the colour shutter was behind the gate here. So you were colouring the light that was going through the image rather than colouring the image as it came out of the projector. So um, it is important that the red and green filters are optically reasonable, otherwise we're going to distort the picture. We'll find out. I decided uh, that we need a tachometer to check the speed of the machine, as we need to get up to 32 frames a second. This was one possibility. Um, it's one that works optically and you point it at a spot on a moving part. Quite a few of these for sale on eBay. Different sellers. Cheap enough and probably accurate enough, I'm sure. However, I decided it might be better to use something that was actually fixed to the machine and was giving a readout all the time. So I've decided to go with this one, which uses a hall effect um, proximity switch and a magnet. And again, cheap enough so that will be on order shortly and we'll start, try to work out where the magnet will go on the machine and see if we can make that work I'll need a, to rig up some kind of 24 volt power supply I expect I can find something in the junk box blue or red or maybe green there's a video on YouTube that explains how to wire it with the power. Apparently it's um, not that obvious. But the little circuit diagram that this guy has provided should make it easy enough. Facing it, so you're facing the readout. The ribbon comes 
people coming down, they're numbered. <coughs> There's five tables in this, and I've numbered them.